Hi, I'm Paula Glover, and today we're here in the Zcorum headquarters with Tim Smith, Zcorum's data center team lead and resident expert on all things ARIN and IP address related. He's going to talk us through the overview of what an ISP needs to do to get ready for IPv6, including getting the allocation, getting it routed, and then starting to test the pieces of your network. So, Tim, start out by telling us, please, what are the steps in actually getting your v6 allocation? Okay. Well, the first step that a provider will make is actually let's go get our allocation from Aaron. Uh, large providers want to go to Aaron directly as uh, they will receive an allocation that becomes a portable space that's linked to them. Should they change backbone providers, this space will move with them. Now, our smaller providers may not want to go through this and they will actually work with what's called a local internet registrar, such as we are here as a quorum, and we will handle getting them IPv6 space. Um, but today we're going to talk about what it would take to actually go to Aaron directly. The first thing you must do is you must obtain an org ID. Your org ID identifies you in Aaron's database as an entity, whether it's a business, a nonprofit, or government agency. You must be there to actually receive an allocation from Aaron. Uh, after the org ID is obtained, then you will actually go through the process of filling out a form that is actually on Aaron's website, an IPv6 allocation form. Once the form is completed, then you will need to pay the fees that are associated with it. And right now the fee structure is reduced until the year 2012. Um, at that point the fees will go back to full. So, but you can get more detailed instructions on this on our website, zacorum.com forward slash IPv6. So once an ISP has their allocation, how can they work with their backbone provider to get it routed? Well, getting it routed, um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make sure that your equipment at your customer, at your end as the provider, is IPv6 compliant and configured. Some pieces are automatically IPv6 compliant, but the, may, the feature set may not be turned on. You will need to make sure this is taken care of. Once you get the space, you will then contact your backbone provider and say, here's my errand allocation. Can you please route this down my existing circuit? Uh, the backbone provider will work to get this space routed. It is taking them a little time. People must understand that backbone providers have to be IPv6 compliant from end to end and a lot of them are still struggling with the issues that come with IPv6 and this being a new technology that everybody's being forced to use because we are running out of IPv4 space. So, so the key is to be patient. Right? It is. It is definitely a, bit a patient process. Um, once the addresses have been routed down your circuit you can then begin IPv6 testing going to various IPv6 websites that are out on the internet right now. A lot of the larger content providers such as Google and Yahoo have IPv6 capable websites. Perfect. So once you've got an allocation and you've got it routed, what else inside your network do you need to be thinking about? At the network level, you need to realize that the internet as we know it is not going to function in the same way and that IPv6 is not the exact same thing as IPv4. V4 space is what we've all been used to. V6 space is a little bit different. Um, it's quite large. And it is going to take some time for us to retire all the legacy IPv4 internet and everybody move over to IPv6. We suggested during this time you should actually do some readiness testing on your network and figure out the devices that are actually ready to go um, and what is your, going to be your best path for IPv6 deployment. Some folks will go with what is most commonly called a dual stack. You will use some IPv4 and some IPv6 because you will have pieces in your network that are not compliant all the way through. You will have legacy pieces that you will have to make uh, decisions as a provider. Do I want to continue to try to support IPv4 networks or do I want to move over to IPv6 networks? You will also have your end users who will also be having legacy equipment and may not be able to move through your transport. So most of our affiliates will run in what is called a dual stack mode. They will actually run some IPv6 only content, some IPv4 only content, and things will be homogenized so they can run on either set of content depending on where you're coming from. That's good information. When we talk about end users, what all do you need to do in your network to deliver the service down to them? Okay, now if you're, if you're a provider who's already using, let's say, DHCP protocol, you'll need to make sure that you have an IPv6 DHCP enabled server to deliver these IPv6 addresses. In addition, you'll need to make sure that you have delivered to your end users an IPv6 device at their location that can terminate IPv6 routing, uh, be this a cable modem or a DSL modem. You will also need to make sure that the, if you are an ISP who's used to using PPP or radius authentication as we call it, you will need to make sure you have an IPv6 radius server as well. Any other support servers, email and DNS, those will also need to be IPv6 compatible. Good information. We want to thank Tim for joining us and explaining the overview of how to implement IPv6 in an independent ISP's network. 
We hope you'll stay tuned for our next video when we talk with your business customers about what they need to do to be ready for IPv6. Thanks, Tim, for joining us. Thank you.